your spirit. We gather this morning on the solemnity of the Lord of the Most Holy Trinity, uh, this day that we celebrate the unity and the service of the Lord uh, and the tri our triune God. So we celebrate these mysteries. We first pause and call to mind our sins, though, asking God for his mercy and forgiveness. You ascend to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Your 
seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, our Father, by the sending into the world, by your sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along with our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory to you o lord god so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It's a beautiful day outside, of course, so it's good to have all of you here uh, virtually at least, celebrating this Mass together on this beautiful solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. So we celebrate it in unity together, even if we're not all in the same place. An author tells a story about how he took a job, a new job, as an executive director of some corporation. The day that this new director started, he opened the refrigerator in the lunchroom and he put his lunch in it. And at that moment, he realized that that refrigerator had not been cleaned in a very, very long time. And I think we all know what that looks like. 
And he asked around who was in charge of cleaning the refrigerator, but no one really knew. So he assumed it was everyone's responsibility, therefore he decided he would clean it. The next Saturday, this director brought his children to work with him. It was their little project that they were going to work on together. He thought it was a great idea. They could share some time together. They can get the refrigerator clean. They can spend some one-on-one -on -one time with their dad. So they cleaned it, they defrosted it, and making it really look really good and clean, they enjoyed their lunch together. And they all got the job done, and they had a nice day. What happened next, though, was unexpected. By Monday morning, word had gotten out that the new executive director of the corporation had taken, it on, uh, had taken on this disgusting task, and he himself cleaned the refrigerator. Some workers apologized for letting it get so bad. Some told him that he shouldn't have done it. After all, he was the boss. But his response was simple. He said, it had to be done, so I did it. For years after, the story goes that he had to fight the others for the opportunity to clean the refrigerator going forward because they were so now attuned to the fact that it had to be done, and it was as they believed their job to do. My friends, if we believe that nothing is beneath our dignity, then we're thinking and we're behaving like God, like the Most Holy Trinity. It's the way the executive director thought that cleaning a refrigerator was not beneath his dignity. More importantly, more theologically, Jesus himself thought coming to this world and dying for us was not beneath his dignity. God the Father didn't see it was beneath his dignity to send his son into the world to save us from our sins by a painful death on the cross. God the Holy Spirit didn't believe it was beneath his dignity to come and dwell among us, to guide us and to help us to be holy. The gospel today says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not die, but might have eternal life. God served us, and our responsibility is for us to imitate that love of Jesus by serving him and each other. As Christians, we're called to imitate this love of Jesus, love that oftentimes seems beneath us, or beneath our dignity. We run into trouble when we believe that something or someone is below us, is not worthy of us or our attention or our giving of ourselves. Isn't that how this whole social unrest came about? Men treated another man with no dignity and they killed him. Then others, the non-peaceful protesters, treated neighborhoods and business owners without respect and without dignity. And now we have innocent people dead, including not only George Floyd, we have a retired police officer, David Dorn, we have others dead, we have many burned out neighborhoods and cities that will take decades to rebuild, all because from the beginning of all this, people thought it was beneath them to serve others to treat them with dignity and respect. This mystery of the Trinity, of the most holy Trinity, teach us that God loves us and he gives us his example of love in the Trinity. The Father loves the Son so much that he sent him. The, Father, the Son loves the Father so much that from them proceeds the Holy Spirit the fruit of the love between the Father and the Son. The Trinity is all about love and sacrifice and doing what we wouldn't think is beneath us or doing what we do think might be beneath us, but we do it anyway. That's what God did. If we follow this model of love and service toward all, there would be no killing, there'd be no murder, there'd be no burning down of others' neighborhoods we would realize that there is no such thing as 
or we would realize that loving neighbor in such a beautiful way is not beneath us, but it's what we're called to do as Christians. There is only loving in that way that we're called to do. St. Paul in the second reading reminds us to mend our ways, and we can only do that with God's help. And he also tells us the grace of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with us. That's what we're called to do as well, to mend our ways and to ask God's grace in our lives. Wouldn't it be wonderful, and this is just a thought, but wouldn't it be wonderful if those who were responsible for the death of George Floyd and the death of the several police officers and the looting and the killing, all those who were killed, wouldn't it be wonderful if they admitted that they did it and they asked for forgiveness? Or those who looted thousands of stores brought back what they had taken, returned what they stole and said that they were sorry. Imagine if all of this happened, all of this mending of our ways happened. Imagine that world, what that would be like, as opposed to this current situation that we find ourselves in. This solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity reminds us of the powerful, unending love and unity that God has among him and with us, a love that we receive whether or not we deserve it. The Father cares and looks out for us. The Son died for us. The Spirit who is with us guides us still. God shows us that Loving us is not beneath him. Loving each other should not and cannot be seen as beneath us as well. Together now we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the mystery of the Holy Trinity, let us now bring our prayers before the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, drawn from all nations and languages, May our triune God guide and sustain us as we proclaim the good news of the kingdom. In your loving kindness, Lord, hear our prayer. For, for all in civil power and authority, may the Holy Spirit enkindle in them hearts for servant leadership. In your loving kindness, Lord, hear our prayer. For those enduring trials and challenges in life, 
May they be lifted by the loving presence of God and the support and compassion of the community of faith. In your loving kindness, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here in worship of the triune God, and may the, may the communion of love he outpours preserve us in faith and increase us in holiness. In your loving kindness, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died that they may take their place at the eternal feast in the kingdom of God. We especially pray for David Doran, George Floyd, Richard Albert Ziegler, and in a special way we pray for Edward Edward Winarski, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and suffering, we especially pray for Donna DeVito, Jack Anderson, Florence Bozak, Tim Radomski, Terry Angula, Chiara D'Agostino, Marjorie and Arthur Tom, Chris Safari, Brian and Jean O'Neill, Dan Breslin, Nancy Apert, Antonia and Constantino Cusano, Jack McQuillan, Richard Dauphin, Agnes Safari, Eileen and Ollie Gelston, Kay Connolly, Ron Sen. In your loving kindness, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for all of our special and particular intentions. We pray in thanksgiving for those who have gotten well, and we continue to pray for peace and love throughout our, throughout our world. In your loving kindness, Lord, hear our prayer. All holy God, great and beyond our imagining, we rejoice to call ourselves your sons and daughters. Hear the prayers that we offer this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We will Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, this oblation of our service, and by it make us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with our, your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. <laughs> and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave For, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the, saving, of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <coughs> may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God and Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Cassian, Saint Anthony, Saint Agatha, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us stand now and pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, us give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the, power, the power, and, and the, the glory, glory are yours, are yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed.
bread of life, cup of blessing, gift of Christ the Lord. Be the body you receive now, broken for the world. This is why I came, that you might have life and have it to Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament of, when receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before the final blessing, hopefully everyone has a great week. And remember, we're one week closer to back to church. I'll keep you posted when we're able to uh, have. Uh, Mass is more open to the public. Hopefully we enter phase two soon, as I mentioned in the bulletin. I would ask you to go online and read the bulletin, not only my message, there's a message from Cardinal Tobin as well uh, that I would direct you to, uh, as well as things like uh, what to expect when church is open. So there's a lot of information in the bulletin about uh, us hopefully opening the churches uh, soon. I want to say a special thank you to everyone who served. Uh, uh, Jess, who read, and her daughter, Cassandra, uh, who served, and special congratulations to her and to all of our eighth graders at St. Cashin School who graduated from school this uh, past week. So congratulations to our St. Cashin School students, especially the graduates, and to all of you who graduate, uh, graduated this week or recently. Congratulations. Uh, please continue to pray, though, for uh, wisdom for our leaders and peace in our country and throughout the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
Sweet. 